I am good to go. So on example number one up here, we're going to start it. What do I do first? Separate. Separate. How do I do that? You can go ahead and talk. It doesn't pick your voices up on here. You get, it just picks up me. So how am I going to separate that? Let's multiply. Now I have a choice. I can multiply by 3y squared or I can just multiply by y squared. It really doesn't matter. But usually the general thing is, is don't move constants over because you're just going to have to get rid of them anyway. Because you're going to try to, does that make sense? So I'm going to leave that over there. And I'm going to say, um, sorry, it's freaking out here. So I'm going to do y squared dy, move it over by multiplying, is equal to x plus sine x dx over Three. I'm going to leave the 3 over on the right because it's got to move anyway. So next step, what do I do after I separate? Yeah, exactly. So we're going to integrate. So let's go integrate both sides. I'm just going to throw it right here. There'll be easy antiderivatives. So, yep. Kind of, yeah. I mean, technically, that should be there, but it's not going to affect my end result. So then just a couple easy antiderivatives. I'll just pick on you. Go ahead, Mikey. Antiderivative of y squared. Over, yep, perfect. Over here, what have we always done with our constants when we're integrating? Yeah, bring it out front. So I'm going to bring a one-third out front of that. And really, I'm doing the antiderivative then. I'm not going to rewrite the integral. We, we've got it. What's the antiderivative, um, Jake of x? Perfect. Be careful on the next one, antiderivative of sine, Blake. Thank you. What did you say? He said negative cosine, so excellent. A sine error really, where does the sine error going to affect you in this, by the way? C, exactly. The sine error is going to affect your constant. Why wouldn't that matter on this one, really? It's a good in, critical thinking here. Why doesn't Carl matter on this one? What would you say? I'm not going to be finding him. How do you know you're not going to be finding him? It didn't give me a point. Exactly. We're going to be finding what kind of solution from the vocabulary on the previous page. If you can't hear them, they said general. Excellent. All right. So who's my goal? End goal, because I was just talking a lot. What am I solving for? Y. All right. So let's go do it. What would be the easiest way to attack Y right now? There it is. Let's triple both sides and annihilate the fraction issue. X squared over 2 minus cosine X. Now. I'm bothered a little bit that somebody hasn't said something. It's just bugging me. What's bugging me? Yeah, I forgot, Carl. Where do I put him? I'm not going to be able to find him, but he's there. Yep, so there we go. Boom. All right, I'm almost done. I've almost got it. Yes. What am I going to do? I've almost got it, Christian. Yep, cube root both sides. So my y is going to equal cube root x squared over 2 minus cosine x plus some constant, which I can't find on this one because they didn't give me a point. Are we good? Because they thought this was hard this morning. Are you hip to my jive? Yeah? All right, super. We're going to go mess with you. I can't, I'm doing three examples only, but when you get to your worksheet, they're all different. If I tried to attack every algebra issue you're going to have, I'd, do, I'd have to do a zillion examples. So this one's really different. Here's one thing I did. Right? I'm changing your differential. I'm saying dx dt. So it's not dy dx this time. Who am I solving for? X. Thank you. So who am I going to keep on the left? X. All right, here we go. So let's move everything else. X is going to stay on the left. dx is going to stay on the left. Max, how am I going to move that one over? Yeah. i oh, sorry. I have a couple maxes. What? Division. Yep, so we're going to do 1 over e to the negative t uh, dt. Who haven't I picked on yet? Uh, I don't know. Colton, I've called on you a zillion times. Annika, you up, babe. I'm going to give you an easy question just because it naturally came next, right? You know we're going to integrate, and unfortunately, or fortunately for you, it's the easiest antiderivative in the world. You're voted off the island if you cannot. Am I getting weird? It's close. Um, uh, antiderivative of x. Fantastic. X squared over 2. All right. X squared over 2. A little harder on the right, Abby, and unfortunately, it's I'm going in order. What's the antiderivative? I'm going to help you out. Just one minute. What would be a better way to write 1 over e to the negative t? Somebody else help her out. Thank you. e to the t. So, Abby, I'm going to keep that. All right. 
Last chapter test. What's the antiderivative of e to the x dx? Perfect. So what's the antiderivative of e to the t dt? e to the t. Excellent. All right. So here it is. x squared over 2 equals e to the t. Thank you. All right. Say it louder. If you can't hear me on the notes, he's saying plus Carl. So there it is, plus Carl. And again, what am I trying to solve for? X. Could I find Carl now? Yes. I'm not going to. I'm going to because it, I, I really like to get these like this fraction out of here first. So let's double this. All right. Doubling this, doubling this. Do you think I need to write plus 2C? Yeah, you're not. No, I don't. It's just some other constant. Super. Want to find Carl now? Sure, because last time we found <laughs> Sure, you can find Carl anytime after you've done what? Anytime after I've integrated, thank you. So let's go find him. I mean, I, I almost on this one would wait, but I'm good just because I'm so close to being done, but let's go do it. Keep in mind, this is the point zero, one. But again, what is this? Because I've messed with the variables. The zero's t, thank you. And this is x of t. So again, the zero's going in for the um, independent variable there. Let's go do that. So I would indent when you're finding Carl so you don't disrupt your flow. So let's go. Zero has to equal, because it says x squared. Oops, sorry. I lied. I got it wrong. My um, one has to equal 2e to the 0 plus Carl. You guys go get me Carl. Bang, bang, boom. Give me a good Carl going. What do you got? Negative 1. Super. All right. So here's Carl because this is 1. Carl's going to have to be 1 minus 2 or negative 1. So back to my original flow. X squared, your 2e to the t minus 1. I'm so close I can taste it. But if you're thinking this is easy because I can see it on some of your faces, listen in because there's a decision to make. Um, last step, square root. Be careful here because you got to go back to remembering something about Algebra 1 that this may not be the case. Because what are you supposed to do in that? Wait, you got to go way back to eighth grade. Thank you. Say it louder. Plus or minus. And it matters for these because one of them's right and one of them's wrong. And it's not always the same one. So tune eyes up here for one second because you're going to draw an arrow. Circle these and go point back up there. To determine which one it is, you're going to look at the given point and see what it's supposed to poop out. Is it supposed to poop out positives or negatives? Positives. Now, if that had said 0, comma, negative 1, I, it would indicate that I need the negative root. But it didn't. But it, that doesn't, doesn't mean it's always positive? No. It means it depends on the initial. So mine is going to be a positive because it says up there that 0 poops out a positive 1. What's this called, by the way, again? Just so you know the vocabulary, because it's important. What's that called, Jake? Specific solution. So we're going to go next page. Not that one. We're going to do one last one, is it? I took this one right off the 2015 practice exam that College Board released. Um, because I was wondering if you'd have to do this multiple choice or not. Because usually it's an FRQ, and they had one for multiple choice. This was it. It went through a specific point. And unfortunately, what's going to get you on this one is how you clean it up. Because for multiple choice, you have to have it in its best format. You should be really good at starting it, though. So let's, uh, where did I leave off? Wingard, I'm at you, I think. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Yeah, he's going to separate. 1 over y squared dy equal to 5 dx. You're up, Webster. What's the next thing I do? I'm going to make this look a little better while you're thinking about that. What's next? Yeah, I integrate. Separate, integrate. It rhymes. So you can just throw that on right there. You don't need to waste time rewriting. Grayson, you're up. Uh, pick one side to do the antiderivative of. You can pick the left or the right. I don't care. All right. What's the antiderivative of y to the negative 2? Thank you. 
my heart was afraid you were going to say LNY squared, and so I was a little worried. But he didn't. Say it louder. What did you say? Oh, but it's still not right. There it is. I was going to say, you said it right last time. <laughs> y to the negative 1 over what? I heard it. Negative 1. There it is. Perfect. How'd you get that, though, just in case? In, what did you see y squared as? 1 over y squared, what did you put it? Y to the negative 2. Yeah, thank you. And then this side I'll do because it's too easy of a question. And don't forget Carl. All right. True or false, Sydney? Do you think I could find Carl right now? Yes. Do you think I will? No. It's got too many negatives in it. I like to kind of do it when it feels good. It doesn't feel good. So, Sydney, I'm going to continue to attack Y. How am I going to get rid of the negative? Yeah, let's go do that. Divide everything by negative 1. Do I need to put minus C? No. Again, it's just some other constant. So go ahead. If it's supposed to be negative, he'll work himself out. He's like Gumby from uh, Gumby. What's he from? Is that Saturday Night Live? The green guy? He stretches. Am I right? Right? I think I'll rename him. He's been Carl for four years. He is now Gumby. He will morph into whatever he needs to at the end. We're almost done here, but this is where you got to kind of be clever. I told you I can't tackle every algebra thing you're going to encounter. How do you solve that for Y? Algebra 2 now. Because I, I need to always undo stuff. Yeah, go ahead, Colton. Let's do that. Okay, wait. Just wait. So let's do what we know. Okay, that is 1 over Y. That's helpful. In Algebra 1 now, they give you about three ways to solve that. Somebody else, and where was I? Did you, oh, you're up. It's scrappy. How do I solve that for Y? Oh, thank you. She's saying, well, you could multiply it over here. Is that legal? Yes, and then divide over here. Sure. Got another way? I'm just, just for, I was almost going to say shits and giggles, but Mr. Martin's in here, so I'm not going to say it. Just, <laughs> That's one of my favorite phrases, but I didn't really say it. I just sort of said it, just for the heck of it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, where was I? What else could you do besides what Scrappy said? Because I'm looking for, can't I? Sir, you could just flip them both over. Would that work? Sure, you got two of the three that are in my head. What's the other thing I could do? Oh, I could, there's four. <laughs> exactly, Elise. You could set up a proportion and go back to Algebra 1 and cross-multiply. Or, I want to see if someone can, there's four ways now. No one would choose this way except me. No. <laughs> no. You could have just gone up here and said to the negative 1, because then that's y to the first, and then that flips it. Huh, that'd be clever, but you guys aren't as clever as I. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it Scrappy's way. Just kind of picture multiplying y over here and then dividing. Or uh, Brianna, just flip the thing over, Miss Larude. We're good. I like it. I just like to show you all ways because not everybody's brain is wired the same, and definitely not like mine is. I wouldn't have done it any of those ways. Um, anyway, I'm almost there. By the way, this was multiple choice, and that looks like nothing that you would have seen. I'll pop it up for you tomorrow. I forgot to screenshot it. You wouldn't be at even a way to guess. None of them even had a negative 5x on it. So there's something more that's got to be done. Give me, where was it? I'm way back. Olivia, what's next? Yeah, plug it in. Go figure out what Carl is. So I told you that when you put a 0 in for x, it has to poop out a, what did I tell you up on the top? A 3. Okay, so let's indent here. 3 has to equal 1 over 0 plus Carl. All right, now I'm getting at Carl. 1 over what is 3? Common sense. Thank you. Don't tell me to cross multiply and you know, all that is. 1 over 1 third is 3. So Carl is 1 third. So little, who's next? Little Bradley. Are you ready, little Brad? You went through all this work on the AP exam, and you did it all right, and that's a lot of calculus and a lot of algebra, and none of the answers look like that. Because there's something, it's breaking one of our four rules of, I've got a fraction in a fraction. I've got a complex fraction, so you would hate to choke on this after all this good calculus, because you don't know how to get this as a single fraction, because they will never leave fractions inside of fractions. So, Max, you're up. How do I un get take care of my fraction in a fraction. There's two ways. Uh, are, are you thinking crisscross applesauce? 
I'll take it. That'll work. Always works. And then he went like this, like flip it over. Mike, I want you got want to think outside the box a little bit. You got it, Elise? What? Thank you. Wouldn't that be easier? Yes, I've taught you to clean up complex fraction. We go crisscross, applesauce, you'd be good to go. But this one's numerical, so it's so much easier. We're used to having very just why is that legal, by the way? What is three over three? Well, I'm not changing its value. I'm just giving it a facelift. So let's go give it its facelift because this red answer isn't going to be sitting there. Here's what's going to be sitting there. Three over what? Negative 15x plus what? One. Actually, that's not what was there. It was three over one minus 15x. But if you can't see those are equivalent, you are also voted off the island. All right. So what I need to have you do next 